The First Kiss from the New Heloisa, Letter 14, by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ah, Eloisa, Eloisa, what have you done? You meant to reward me, and you are the cause of my ruin. I am intoxicated, or rather, I am mad. My brains are turned, all my senses are disordered by this fatal kiss. You design to alleviate my pain, but you have cruelly increased my torment. The poison I have imbibed from your lips will destroy me. My blood boils within my veins. I shall die, and your pity will but hasten my death. O oh, immortal remembrance of that elusive, frantic, and enchanting moment, never, never to be effaced so long as Eloisa lives within my soul until my heart is deprived of all sensation, thou wilt continue to be the happiness and torment of my life. Alas, I possessed an apparent tranquillity, resigned myself entirely to your supreme will, and never murmured at the fate you condescended to prescribe. I had conquered the impetuous sallies of my imagination. I disguised my looks and put a lock upon my heart, I but half expressed my desires, and was as content as possible. Thus your billet found me, and I flew to your cousin. We arrived at Clarence. My heart beat quick at the sight of my beloved Eloisa. Her sweet voice caused a strange emotion. I became almost transported, and it was lucky for me that your cousin was present to engage your mother's attention. We rambled in the garden, dined comfortably, you found an opportunity, unperceived, to give me your charming letter, which I durst not open before this formidable witness. The sun began to decline, and we hastened to the woods for the benefit of the shade. Alas, I was quite happy, and I did not even conceive a state of greater bliss. As we approached the bower, I perceived, not without a secret emotion, your significant winks, your mutual smiles and the increasing glow in thy charming cheeks. Soon as we entered, I was surprised to see your cousin approach me, and with an affected air of humility, ask me for a kiss. Without comprehending the mystery, I complied with her request, and, charming as she is, I never could have had a more convincing proof of the insipidity of those sensations which proceed not from the heart. But what became of me a moment after, when I felt? My hands shook, a gentle tremor, thy balmy lips, my Eloisa's lips, touch, pressed to mine, and myself within her arms. Quicker than lightning, a sudden fire darted through my soul. I seemed all over sensible of the ravishing condescension and my heart sunk down oppressed with insupportable delight, when all at once I perceived your color change, your eyes close. You leaned upon your cousin and fainted away. Fear extinguished all my joy, and my happiness vanished like a shadow. I scarcely know anything that has passed since that fatal moment. The impression it has made on my heart will never be effaced. A favor? It is an extreme torment. No, keep thy kisses. I cannot bear them. They are too penetrating, too painful. They distract me. I am no more myself, and you appear to me no more the same object. You seem not as formerly chiding and severe, but methinks I see and feel you lovely and tender, as at that happy instant when I pressed you to my bosom. O oh, Eloisa! Whatever may be the consequence of my ungovernable passion, use me as severely as you please. I cannot exist in my present condition, and I perceive I must at last expire at your feet or in your arms. End of The First Kiss from the New Eloisa Letter 14 by Jean-Jacques Rousseau